and then a spark is passed between two electrodes and on one of those electrodes the sample is present and that puts atoms into the analysis part of the machine gives us the possibility to analyze what kind of atoms were present in the sample here is a flask in which the same kind of production of charged atoms can be uh, can be done and the atoms pass from that flask in this diagrammatic representation here into the main part of the apparatus like the balls going down the slope into the four different compartments the atoms having been charged proceed into the main part of the apparatus emerging into a tube representing the slope through a small slit and then they're subjected to a magnetic field and just like the balls going down the slope the heavier ones are deflected least because they have the greater momentum the lighter ones are deflected most and the analysis of the different deflections can be performed at the other end of this model apparatus by varying the strength of the magnetic field and allowing each, each stream of atoms to pass through a small slit giving us then a measure of the quantity of atoms of different weight in the original sample now in old types of apparatus the record was preserved on a photographic trace but in modern apparatus here is the tube and here the enormous magnet in modern apparatus the record is more sophisticated here it can be directly read on a graph Sophisticated apparatus of that kind is now commonplace in the laboratories of anyone involved in the business of discovering and appraising ore bodies. And it's indicative of the tremendous changes that have taken place in the mining and prospecting industry in the last decades. At the same time as we've come to understand the possible relationship of ore bodies to, for example, plate tectonics, tremendous changes have also been taking place in the way that or is mined. Looking back 50 years shows that very vividly. At the time this recently discovered film was made for the Mond Nickel Company,